Hello everyone. I hope you guys are doing well and studies going in full swing. Now in today's video, we are going to discuss a fairly important topic, index twelve. This is a slightly dreaded topic when it comes to individual index at CA Inter AS twenty two or at CA Final index twelve level. So in today's video, we would be discussing all the concepts, important steps, exceptions, and important questions as well. So hopefully, index twelve does not haunt you anymore. So let us get started. so before we go into the nitty gritty we would first want to understand a few key terms pertaining to index 12 first you have current tax this is a tax which is calculated as per the provisions of income tax act let's say pgbp etc so this is current tax so over here in your paper 4 direct tax you calculate your computation of income and based on that whatever is the tax which is applicable will be the current tax now the thing is when you look at your index principles and your tax principles they may not necessarily be the same in a lot of cases like depreciation for fixed assets or section 43b items like a uh, payment of bonus or interest on to scheduled commercial banks which is allowed as a deduction on a payment basis income tax will give you deductions at a different point of time books will give you deductions at different time point of time and hence there can be a difference in the profit as per books and profits as per income tax now when you present your financial statements you just present the profits as per index computation of income is not something which is shown along with your annual report and hence for a layman when they look at their profits for example you have bought a your a profit before tax and depreciation is 100 rupees you bought a machinery which is subjected to 50% depreciation under income tax and 20% depreciation or 25% depreciation as per books now when you look at your profits if the asset is worth let us say 100 rupees 100 into 50% income tax will give you a 50 rupees deduction for depreciation books will give you just a 25 rupees deduction for depreciation and thereby when you look at your books the profit may be 100 minus 25 that is equal to 75 but in income tax computation of income the profit may be 100 minus 50 that is equal to 50 so your current tax is calculated as 15 into let us say 30% that is 15 rupees now when a reader looks at the financial statements he would be like wow you have a profit as per index of 75 on which you are just paying a tax let us say of 15 rupees now this apparently shows you that you are saving tax Ideally, on seventy-five rupees, seventy-five to thirty percent, your tax should be around twenty-two point five. However, you are just paying fifteen rupees, and hence apparently it appears that you are saving seven point five of tax. But is that really the case? The answer is no. Why? Because in income tax, in year one and year two, you will get a fifty-fifty deduction for depreciation. But eventually, income tax will not give you any further deduction on depreciation for that asset. But in books. depreciation would be deducted as 25 and 25 in year 1 and 2 but also another 25 and 25 in years 3 and 4 and thereby you will get deduction in the books even in the third and the fourth year whereas in income tax in the third and fourth year your profit let us say all else remaining constant will be 100 and hence in the third and the fourth year the tax that you will pay will be 100 into 30% that is equal to 30 in year 3 30 in year 4 so in the first two years where apparently it appears that you are saving tax that is instead of paying 75 into 30 percent that is equal to 22.5. You are just paying 15 rupees. That is 15 to 30 percent. In the last two years, as per income tax, you will have to pay 100 into 30 percent. That is 30. So what is essentially happening is, if you kind of try to cut through these numbers, what is essentially happening is, under deferred tax provisions, you are trying to say that in the beginning, you are trying to defer tax and not really save tax. So these are due to temporary differences. So over here. your current tax is coming as 15 rupees in the first year whereas your profit as per books is 75 into 30% ideally it should be 22.5 now because of this 7.5 is appearing as if it's an apparent saving but it is not a saving because you're probably going to pay lesser tax now but again that you'll have to pay more tax in the future and hence this is the birth of deferred tax deferred tax so tax that is getting deferred and not really saved and hence deferred tax is created due to differences which are which are temporary in nature now there can be certain differences which are other than temporary in nature also called as permanent in nature like if you are contributing money uh, to an unregistered charitable institution you are never going to get a deduction under income tax but books does not differentiate between registered and unregistered the donation will be allowed as an expense in the books as per index now this is called as a other than temporary difference that is you might have to pay more tax now because an expense is disallowed under income tax but that is a permanent difference because in the future that is never going to be allowed under income tax as well so when you create a deferred tax deferred tax is created on differences which are temporary in nature that is 
you are getting a deduction in one year in the books you will get the deduction under income tax but let's say in some other year like for example a 43b item like uh, you have taken a loan of 100 crores on which interest is 10 percent in the first year you the interest of 10 crores is accrued however not paid books does not differentiate it says okay interest expense if not then in, uh, paid then it was payable but in income tax section 43b says that you will get a deduction only when that interest is paid so in the first year even if the interest is not paid in your financial index records you will get a 10 rupees expense but under income tax you will not get a deduction now but you will definitely get it in the future when you actually pay it and hence this difference is called as a temporary difference and deferred tax is created only in cases of differences which are temporary in nature so over here the total of current tax and deferred tax together will give you what is called as income tax expense so current tax plus or minus as a case may be deferred tax expense would give you the income tax expense that is to be recorded in the books of accounts now we said that the deferred tax is created on differences which are temporary if differences are other than temporary there is either actual saving or actual excess payment of tax and hence it is not a course of deferred tax so differences differences between what well as we said at the start of the session in S12 focuses on what is called as a balance sheet approach whereas AS22 looked at the differences due to depreciation or differences in accounting and tax profit in S12 says that forget the income statement or individual expenses let us look at the balance sheet like where does depreciation go for example it goes into pp so let us look at the balance sheet and on a simplistic basis you would say that what is the balance of the ppe for example which is an underlying asset what is the example what is the balance of pp as per index principles so when you apply index you will apply all index principles maybe impairment maybe depreciation all of them after considering all of that what is the balance as per index now ideally if the asset was 100 and the depreciation as per books is 25 then your carrying value will be 75 rupees now that is the balance which is there for an asset in the index balance sheet that is called as a carrying value you will compare this with something called as tax base now what do you mean by tax base tax base refers to the on a simplistic on an overly simplistic basis it refers to the amount for that corresponding asset which will appear in the income tax balance sheet like for example if the asset is 100 rupees and income tax gives you a deduction of 50 rupees that means there is uh, 100 minus 50 that is 50 rupees will be the tax base that will appear in the tax balance sheet fundamentally it means that if it is an asset worth 50 which is appearing in the tax balance sheet that will entitle you to future tax deductions worth 50 however the carrying value is 75 in indias and hence that will entitle you to a further deduction of 75 as per the index principles so basically if you look at the carrying value and tax base they are not the same they are different ideally if the depreciation rates etc were the same then carrying value and tax base should be the same and if carrying value and tax base are same there would be no deferred tax however if the carrying values and tax base are not the same that gives birth to deferred tax and this can be a deferred tax asset or this can be a deferred tax liability so over here two important terms one is carrying value the other one is tax base carrying value is a value as per ind as tax base is the amount that will appear in the tax balance sheet so if you have any questions in your mind generally on a simplistic base ask yourself that if i were to prepare the tax balance sheet then what will be the amount of this particular asset or a particular liability as per the tax balance sheet that will be the tax base now when you look at differences if the carrying value and tax base are not the same there is a difference now this difference may be due to a temporary factor or other than temporary factor if it is due to other than temporary factor there is no deferred tax calculation but if this is due to a temporary factor then there will be deferred tax now this deferred tax can be either a deferred tax liability or an asset like if due to this difference you are going to pay more tax in the future years it is called as a taxable temporary difference like the example of depreciation that we were discussing earlier we were saying that well income tax gives me 50 rupees of deduction in the current year books gives you only 25 rupees of deduction due to which your carrying value is 75 tax base is 50 so the difference is 25 now this 25 will be we has been taken as a deduction in income tax now and this will result in lower deduction in the future years and thereby this is called as a taxable temporary difference now we will remember standard rules that you can follow but on at a fundamental level taxable temporary difference would mean difference which results in you having to pay more tax in the future years what has happened in the past forget it deferred tax is a forward looking item so we would say that due to this difference what will happen in the future well in the future you will end up paying more tax and thereby this is called as a deferred 
this is called as a taxable temporary difference which will go give birth to you guys tell me deferred tax what if it results in me having to pay more tax in the future yes it is a liability and hence this gives rise to a deferred tax liability so a taxable temporary difference will give rise to a deferred tax liability on the other hand if it's a deductible temporary difference it is a difference which will result in you getting a deduction or you paying a lesser tax in the future years like for example the other example of section 43 b that we discussed like in books you have claimed a deduction income tax has disallowed it it has disallowed it now but when you actually pay that interest income tax will allow you the deduction books will not again allow you the deduction because it has already given you the deduction earlier and thereby in the future years due to this 43b item of interest payable you will get deduction under income tax and thereby this is called as a deductible temporary difference a deductible temporary difference helps you in paying lesser tax in the future years and thereby this is called as a deferred tax asset simplistically in case of a deductible temporary difference you will probably have to pay more tax now because some expenses are disallowed and thereby you will pay lesser tax in the future so it's like a prepaid expense whereby you call it as a deferred tax asset on the other hand deferred tax liability is like an outstanding expense so you are paying lesser tax now but you will pay more tax in the future so long story short if it is a taxable temporary difference it will give rise to a deferred tax liability if it is a deductible temporary difference it will give rise to a deferred tax asset okay then when you look at the recognition so on a fundamental level hopefully we should try to understand that what is a deferred tax asset liability when does it get created next if let us say there is an expense whether it is current tax expense whether it is current or deferred where should it be recorded well we would say the answer is quite simple we should go to the pnl the standard says not necessarily usually tax is created on items like sales less purchases less expenses which are all going to the pnl and hence ideally if nothing is available tax goes to the pnl however it is very much possible that income tax is also on items which are recorded in oci like equity investments at fa oci in which case if there is an equity investment of 100 it becomes 120 the 20 rupees gain if it is classified as fet oci fair value through other comprehensive income the 20 rupees gain will be shown in oci so if there is a tax impact on that the tax impact on that should also go to the oci so the long story short is your tax will go exactly where the underlying gains or losses are going so over here recognition of tax both current and deferred if you look at items to be recorded in the pnl the tax will be recorded in the pnl items in the oci tax will be in the oci in fact if there are certain items which are directly recorded in the reserves like D, uh, earlier there was dividend and corresponding ddt so dividend goes directly in retained earnings ddt also goes in retained earnings or uh, in uh, ifos income from other sources there is a case that in case of a closely held company or a private company if you are getting on share issue an amount which is greater than fair value it is also treated as a taxable item now in books of accounts if you are issuing a share of 10 rupees at 50 the fair value might be let's say 45 if you are issuing it at 50 the 5 extra just for your knowledge will go in securities premium the entire money which is excess over face value will go in the securities premium if it is subjected to any tax the tax on that should also be recorded exactly where the income went and hence if items are directly recorded in reserves then even the tax impact should go in the reserves only okay now after this what is there is arguably one of the most important things that you should know from a student standpoint for for this chapter this is steps in the deferred tax calculation every sum that you get in general except for a few exceptions that we will discuss will have four steps and if you do that four steps properly and we will also try to remember a rule so we will understand the concept but also from an exam perspective if we are short on time we should also remember a rule which will help us in identifying a deferred tax asset or liability and in general it will not go wrong so over here there are four steps in calculating deferred tax for any item to start with first you will note down what the appropriate balance sheet item is like for uh, a pp is an underlying asset or if you have taken a loan loan liability is an underlying liability or if there is interest payable interest receivable provision for restructuring intangible asset all of these you will first figure out that what is this item on which you are calculating deferred tax from a balance sheet perspective okay after that you will try to find in step number 1 the carrying value carrying value is a value as per indes apply indes principles and that is why you do it slightly later while you are revising because you would want to know that what is the indes treatment like you might get a indes 109 sum or a consolidation or a business combination sum and you might the institute will expect you to calculate the value as per indes because you are solving paper number 1 
and hence you should know how to calculate the carrying value step number one value as per index step number two is the tax base now while calculating tax base you are solving paper one and not paper four and hence you are not expected to know all the prevailing income tax laws in fact most of the sums that we have seen the institute almost always tells you what the income tax treatment is like for example if there is an intangible on which uh, amortization is there in the books they will not mention what index 38 tells you but they will tell you that this development expenditure is fully tax deductible for example so they will tell you that what is the treatment under income tax and hence you should visualize in your mind that maybe if there is an intangible asset of 15 lakhs that you have purchased books gives you amortization over five years however income tax gives you full deduction so in your income tax records your entry would be development expense account debit to bank tax pnl account debit to development expense so if i were to open my tax balance sheet there will be no intangible asset and hence my tax base would be zero so basically i will try to visualize and ask myself that what will be the amount for this current corresponding asset or liability if i were to hypothetically prepare a tax balance sheet and that on a simplistic level will be your tax base this works for all assets and liabilities for reserves we will have a slightly different rule like if you have an sbp reserve or accumulated losses it's a slightly different rule but otherwise for assets and liabilities this generally works step one carrying value that is a value as per index step number two tax base that is a value as per the tax balance sheet step number three is very simple you take the difference between the two and then step number four you have to take the difference into the tax rate this will give you the deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability now this is where a lot of students kind of falter fundamentally as we said if the difference gives rise in in you having to pay higher tax in the future years it's a uh, it's a taxable temporary difference giving rise to deferred tax liability or if it gives rise to you getting a deduction in the future years it's a deductible temporary difference giving rise to deferred tax asset now fundamentally this might be right but in an exam pressure and situation if you want to kind of cross check or vet this there are standard rules that you can remember the rule over here is you will compare for an underlying asset or an underlying liability underlying asset is like pp underlying liability is like a loan taken you will compare the relationship between carrying value and tax base so if your carrying value is greater than tax base if your carrying value that is a value as per index is greater than the tax base one needs to remember that the answer will always be opposite opposite means an underlying asset like a pp will always create a deferred tax liability opposite answer and an underlying liability like a loan taken or an interest payable will always create a deferred tax asset sir we are unable to understand like for example if i were to take that same example if it was a pp with carrying value of 75 and the tax base of 50 so the difference is 25 rupees this is step one step two step three now this 25 is where the carrying value is greater than the tax base now if carrying value is greater than the tax base for an asset it means in the future income tax is going to give you a deduction only for 50 rupees books is going to give you deduction for 75 and hence income tax is going to give you a short deduction for 25 thereby you'll have to pay more tax and hence a deferred tax liability Abhi, itna kaun and hence we are trying to say that wherever you first figure out whether it is pp Achha, pp is an asset i hope you remember that otherwise bhagwan apko bache so over here you should be able to identify whether the loan taken is a liability or an asset pp is a liability or asset once you do that you look at step one you look at step two carrying value and tax base if carrying value is greater than tax base answer is always opposite 100 percent that is a, a pp where carrying value is greater than the tax base will give you a deferred tax liability on the other hand for example it's a 43b item like interest payable you have a 100 crore loan 10 crores is interest payable carrying value as per index for interest payable will be 10 tax base would be zero because there would be no entry passed in the income tax act because there's no deduction so no interest expense no interest payable and thereby you will have uh, no separate entry to be honest and as a result you will have uh, carrying value to be 10 tax base to be zero now the difference over here is 10 rupees now we have said that as per the standard rule the answer is opposite so if your carrying value is greater than the tax base answer is opposite so if interest payable is a liability then if the carrying value is greater than the tax base answer is opposite it will give rise to a deferred tax asset okay but why a deferred tax asset well because in such a case if it's a liability item where carrying value is greater tax base is lower this means that in income tax you are yet to get a deduction 
which will be obtained in the future years and if you obtain a deduction in the future years like you will get 10 rupees when interest is paid that will help you in saving tax and hence this will create a deferred tax asset so if you remember this you are kind of sorted the next part should be easy so the other possibility over here first possibility is carrying value is greater than the tax base second possibility is carrying value is less than the tax base in which case the answer will always flow in the same direction that is an asset will give rise to a deferred tax asset a liability will give rise to a deferred tax liability like for example if i were to swap the case of a pp whereby there was a pp of 100 rupees where income tax gives you a 25 rupees deduction and books gives you a 50 rupees deduction then carrying value will be 50 tax base will be 75 and as a result the difference is still 25 but this is a difference where carrying value is less than the tax base so in income tax i'm still going to get 75 card deduction in books i'm i'm going to get in the future only 50 card deduction so income tax is going to give me 25 more and as a result i'll pay lesser tax in the future so that is like a deferred tax asset again that is a concept but from an exam perspective you will never go wrong even if you remember these rules that is if carrying value is greater than the tax base answer is opposite if carrying value is less than the tax base answer is in the same direction that is a asset will give rise to a deferred tax asset a liability will give rise to a deferred tax liability but if it is Carrying value is greater than the tax base. The answer is opposite. So an asset like PP will give rise to a deferred tax liability. A liability like interest payable will give rise to a deferred tax asset. And the last part, you might need to rewind, revisit this entire section for understanding the rule. But if you get that correct and you practice it properly, no one is going to stop you. And then carrying value is equal to the tax base. If carrying value is equal to the tax base, there is no difference. If there is no difference, there is no deferred tax. So this is something uh, which is quite important. So, subjected to a few exceptions, in general, for almost all cases, you can say that if you want to calculate deferred tax, first identify the item, then step one, carrying value as per index, step two, tax base as per income tax records, visualize the entries that you would have passed if you were to prepare hypothetically a tax balance sheet, take the difference. And step number four, difference into the tax rate will give you either a deferred tax asset or liability. The general rule is if your carrying value is greater than the tax base, answer will be opposite. If your carrying value is less than the tax base, answer will be in the same direction. If it is equal, then there will be no deferred tax. Now, ultimately, there may be different items which might give rise. Some of them might give rise to a deferred tax asset. Some of them might give rise to a deferred tax liability. One needs to remember that in your final balance sheet, INDES allows you to offset the deferred tax asset and liability as long as they can be offset uh, like a depreciation and preliminary expenses. They are both going into the computation of PGBP in the Indian context. They can be offset. So deferred tax liability on depreciation can be offset against a deferred tax asset, let us say on preliminary expenses. You can show that net unless deferred tax asset and liability are arising out of different tax laws like uh, a deduction is allowed under in Indian income tax laws, something else is charged under the US tax laws, you cannot offset the two and hence in such rare cases, you can show, you have to show the deferred tax asset and liability separately, but if nothing is given, you can offset and show the deferred tax asset and liability net. Okay, next in step number four, we had discussed that we will calculate deferred tax asset or liability as a difference into the tax rate. Now the problem is which tax rate should you take? Well, for calculating current tax, you will take the prevailing tax rate in the prevailing year. So there is nothing, uh, no rocket science over here. But when you look at deferred tax, now current tax is based on tax, which is to be uh, paid in the current year. But deferred tax is based on future. So I'm saving tax now, but I'm going to pay more tax in the future or I'm paying more tax now. Importantly, I'm going to pay lesser tax in the future. So your deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability depends on how much tax you're going to pay in the future in case of a deferred tax liability or how much deduction or tax savings you're going to get in the future in case of a deferred tax asset. For that, you need to know the tax rates which are prevailing in the future years. Now, you as a management can estimate the useful life of an asset, etc. But you, are, you cannot estimate what the governments are going to do. And as a result, the standard does not allow you to estimate tax rates of the future. In fact, it uses some very nicely worded language. It says, okay, we cannot estimate the future tax rate, but you should not even take the prevailing or past tax rates. Then what should you do? You should take the tax rates which have been enacted. That is, it is passed as a finance act or substantively enacted. That is, it has passed as a finance bill or an official notification in the Gazette, etc. is given, whereby it can be treated to be substantively enacted till the balance sheet date. So, for example, in general, if you remove election years, most of the times what happens is by 31st March, before 31st March, on 1st February, a budget is tabled. 
and in that budget let us say if they have told that the income tax rate in the coming years will fall let us say from 25% to 20% in which case this can be treated as a substantive enactment even if till the balance sheet date the finance act is not yet passed if it is passed then nothing like it, it is an enactment or even if it is not passed as long as it is substantively enacted we can take the tax rates which have been enacted or substantively enacted till the balance sheet date so this is the rates that you use for the purpose of deferred tax calculation now sometimes it might happen that in the future different the way the asset is utilized tax may be levied like for example if you were to sell the asset then capital gains tax would be levied which may be at 20 percent but if we were to use the asset then depreciation would be claimed as a deduction which will reduce your pgbp income maybe that that can be charged at 25 or 30 percent and as a result sitting today i don't know what is going to happen in the future so and if there is a single item which can be subjected to multiple treatments in the future management will have to estimate what it intends to do does it intend to use the asset in which case deferred tax can be calculated at the pgpp based rate or does it intend to sell the asset in which case the deferred tax can be calculated at the capital gains based rate so that is in case different natures of income are taxable at different tax rates the management will have to assess how it intends to utilize the asset now an important adjustment can possibly come where there can be a possible change in the tax rate so if you had created deferred tax based on 30 percent and now by the end of the year the government changes the tax rate let us say to 20 percent in which case there's a change in tax rate so your deferred tax liability which was earlier based on let us say taxable temporary difference which you thought in the future when they reverse you will have to pay at the rate of 30 now you'll have to pay at the rate of 20 only and hence you will have to re measure the deferred tax assets or the deferred tax liabilities based on the revised tax rates the second effect over here can go into the pnl or into the oci depending on where the underlying assets or liabilities are like for example if your deferred tax was created due to an oci item like investments in equity shares at fa oci then your earlier deferred tax impact has gone into the oci then the impact due to the changes in taxes will also go into the oci if it has earlier gone into the PNL, then the impact due to changes in tax rates will also go to the PNL. Okay. Next is creation of deferred tax assets and liabilities in general. You can create deferred tax liability because when you create a deferred tax liability, you are, I mean, there are a couple of exceptions, but in general, when you create a deferred tax liability, your general entry would be deferred tax expenses account debit to deferred tax liability. So over here, expense is debited and prudence and conservatism is happy that, okay, if expense is debited, nothing like it. However, when you create a deferred tax asset, the entry is deferred tax asset account debit to deferred tax expenses slash income and hence it goes as a credit to the PNL or OCI. And this is where prudence and conservatism kicks in. They say that, well, you know what, you are creating a deferred tax asset. You are crediting income right now, but ideally prudence and conservatism in to a great extent tells us that you can recognize expense as and when. However, income should be recognized as and when they are earned. However, over here, there is actually no real guarantee that the income will necessarily be earned or not. And as a result, you take a step back. You kind of say that, well, you know what? Uh, we will usually create a deferred tax liability. But when it comes to a deferred tax asset, we will have to see that if there are adequate sources against which you can claim deduction and thereby say with confidence that this difference will help us in saving tax sir but this will always be the case well not necessarily what if you are perennially a chronic loss making company in which case you might you might say that there is a section 43 or a preliminary expense deduction but that section 43 or preliminary be, uh, deduction will not help you save tax unless you become taxable in the first place and hence there's no point creating a deferred tax asset or a very important heading would be carry forward losses so when you look at carry forward losses carry forward losses let's say uh, the treatment as per books and income tax is exactly the same so there's a 300 rupee loss as per books ideally income tax should also show a 300 rupee loss now income tax says that i will carry forward these losses book says loss of the current year will be recorded in the current year income tax says no if it was a profit i would charge you tax but if there's a loss i will not give you any refund of tax in fact i will allow you to carry forward that loss into a future year and then in the next year when you earn a 300 rupee profit for example books would show a 300 rupee profit but income tax would show 300 profit minus 300 of carry forward loss offset and hence no profit no loss as per income tax so this results in a difference so had there been no year one and you had earned a 300 profit in year two then ideally you had to pay 300 to 30 percent that is 90s tax however you are not paying 
that because there was a carry forward loss from the earlier years so when there is a profit it gives you a tax liability but when there is a loss it gives you tax savings but that tax savings accrue when the loss accrues it is just utilized when the loss is offset so the standard over here tries to tell you that usually a carry forward loss will give you a deduction it will help you in paying lesser tax in the future years and hence a carry forward loss will give you a deferred tax asset so whenever you see a carry forward loss don't go into the carrying value tax base this is greater that is greater it's a reserve item the rule that we studied was for assets and liabilities a carry forward loss will always create a deferred tax asset only conceptually because it will help you in saving tax in the future years when you claim an offset but again it will help you in saving tax provided you are expecting to earn profits in the future years like in india you are allowed to carry forward losses in most cases for around 8 years but what if you are a startup who is expected to burn cash make losses over the next 7 or 8 years then even if there's a carry forward loss now it will not help you in saving tax in the future years because you're not going to pay any tax till you make any profits so standard says that to create a deferred tax asset you have to show that there will be an actual saving whereby you will actually save an outgo and hence you can create a deferred tax asset so how can you say what are the sources now the standard gives you three sources first it is a fairly complex one it says check if there are sufficient taxable temporary differences whose reversal pattern matches the reversal pattern of deductible temporary differences now no matter how many times you read this it is going to go off your head what does this mean it means like for example if you have a pp pp worth uh, uh, pp where there's a difference of 9000 which is Uh, uh, which is giving rise to a deferred tax liability, and that nine thousand is reversing three thousand in year one, three thousand in year two, three thousand in year three. So here there's a taxable temporary difference on which you must have definitely created a DTL because there's no exception DTL you have to create deferred tax expense account debit to DTL. Now there are certain preliminary expenses for which you are going to get deduction. Let's say four thousand rupees. You are going to get deduction at the rate of one one thousand for the next four years. So this. Difference of four thousand will be reversed over the next four years, thousand thousand each. So we try to say that well, when the DTL gets created, you say deferred tax expenses account debit to DTL. But when the DTL reverses, you will pass into DTL account debit to PNL. So you are saying that see at the end of the day, deferred tax asset bolo liability bolo they are notional items. So when deferred tax liability gets created, there will be an expense that is booked. But when deferred tax liability gets reversed. then dtl is debited pnl is created so at that same time if there's a dta which is also reversing so when dta gets created yes dta account debit to pnl but when dta gets reversed it is pnl account debit to dta so if we can find enough sources where taxable temporary differences are reversing at the same point when those deductible temporary differences are reversing in which case you can create a dta like in our example the the taxable temporary differences are reversing over the next 3 years whereas deductible temporary differences are reversing over the next 4 years so the first 3 years reversal pattern matches there is a sum on that as well you must have done this uh, so i'm just kind of trying to uh, explain that broadly so th that is a point when one can say that you should you can you are allowed to create a deferred tax because the there are sufficient taxable temporary differences which are reversing when your deductible temporary difference reverse Okay. Second is a most important one from a practical standpoint. We say that forget those differences. Do you earn sufficient profits? If it is probable that is more than a fifty percent chance that sufficient taxable profits would be earned, then you can create a deferred tax. And lastly, what if you don't expect to earn sufficient taxable profits? However, there are tax planning opportunities. Remember, not tax evasion. Tax planning opportunities or strategies which can be implemented. whereby you can create profit against which the losses can be utilized like for example your losses are going to lapse in 2 years let us hypothetically you are following the cash system of accounting for income tax and you have a fixed deposit which is maturing after 5 years cumulative so ideally on a cash system of accounting when you actually get back the money you will charge tax however interest accrues each year so if you shift from the cash system to let us say the mercantile system interest accrued in year 1 in year 2 can also be recorded and can be utilized to offset the losses that are lapsing hypothetically so here you can employ a tax planning strategy in such a way that it helps you in utilizing those carry forward losses so if that is also there you are allowed to create a deferred tax asset so long story short there are three sources which you can check in the order of importance taxable temporary differences whose reversal pattern matches those of deductible temporary differences 
second if it is probable that we will earn sufficient profits and third if there are any tax planning opportunities you can create a deferred tax only if you have sufficient sources against which you can claim a deduction okay now a very important thing over here i would say is a special case pertain to defer tax on business combination now if you even refer our separate business combination video or if you have done bigger topics or sums on business combination like the professional dynamic question etc institute loves asking you a business combination question and within that a defer tax adjustment so even over here the rule remains the same so when you do a business combination you take over assets and liabilities remember over here we are solving a fr paper not a tax paper so whenever not just for business combination for any place what institute says is if there's a difference between the carrying value that is the value as per index and the value as per income tax that difference unless it is specifically told to you that it is permanent we always assume that the difference is temporary and it gives rise to a deferred tax so even at the stage of business combination let us say there's a parent subsidiary relationship you are acquiring control over a subsidiary as per index 103 you will take over the assets and liabilities at fair value let us say one of the assets and liabilities include debtors now these debtors have an invoice value of 100 however we think that 20 of them will go bad and hence we have taken them over at fair value as per index at 80 rupees but income tax says as per income tax records that we will allow you bad debt deduction only when it actually goes bad and not based on your estimate so as per your income tax records your debtor still appear at 100 but at the stage of acquisition we believe that they will give only 80 and hence we have recorded as 80 so there's a difference of 20 now due to this difference your net assets would differ your net assets when you take it over as per ind as would be 80 but your income tax assets for example would be 100 and this is for an underlying net asset where the carrying value is less than the tax base if carrying value is less than the tax base answer is in the same direction a deferred tax asset now why a deferred tax asset will conceptually let us say if i were to take debtors as an example it is because bad debts will give me deduction in the future years and help me save tax in the future years and hence it's a deferred tax asset so the principle remains the same even at the stage of business combination you will take over the net assets at its ind as value compare it with the net assets at its income tax values if nothing is given institute assumes that income tax charges you or assesses tax based on individual pans so in index 103 you will consolidate parent and subsidiary but income tax assessment will happen for a subsidiary separately so if tata motors acquires 100% stake in jlr in tata motors cfs jlr assets and liabilities will be taken over at fair values however jlr's individual pan is still existing and hence income tax assessment is still happening for jlr separately based on its individual pan and hence if nothing is available in uh, institute at least assumes that your tax base will be same as the old carrying values or old ledger balance remember the new carrying values as per index 103 are based on the fair values however jlr will have its own balance sheet and in income tax jlr is still a separate pan separate company assessment is still happening well by the way tata motors acquired share let us say from ford motors but that does not change the income tax status and hence if nothing is available the tax base can be taken to be same as the old carrying value whereas the ind as base will be the fair value of the assets and liabilities taken over if there's a difference we assume that the difference is due to temporary factors unless the question tells you so you will find bigger questions in business combination which will tell you that there are certain assets like indemnification assets or customer relationships which are which are not going to give rise to any deferred tax if they're not going to give any rise to deferred tax they may be skipped from the deferred tax calculation so either you skip them from the deferred tax calculation or you consider their carrying value and tax base to be the same due to which there will be no deferred tax impact but if nothing is given we will always assume that the difference if any let's say in pp intangibles investments is due to a temporary factor and hence we will give rise to a deferred tax so over here on net assets this is quite important maybe not directly from a business uh, from an income tax standpoint but definitely from a business combination standpoint so when you look at net assets carrying value is greater than the tax base this will give rise to a dtl and if there is a carrying value which is less than the tax base then it will give rise to a dt this is the same rule if you go to see that is if the carrying value is greater the answer is opposite that is for a net asset if it gives rise to a deferred tax liability and if the carrying value is lower it is in the same direction it is a deferred tax asset the exception over here is for goodwill you will create a deferred tax 
on all the net assets that you will take except for goodwill it has been specifically exempted under ind as 12 where they have said that you will you do not need to create deferred tax on deferred tax liability on goodwill so usually goodwill is not tax deductible however even if it is tax deductible the standard has given you a specific exclusion to not charge any deferred tax liability on goodwill because it can give rise to what you call as a circular reference because for goodwill you will need deferred tax if you calculate deferred tax goodwill will again change and deferred tax will again change and it will give rise to a circular reference so you will create deferred tax on net assets which are which are uh, we can say uh, considered for tax purposes if nothing is we will assume that all assets are relevant for tax purposes yeah sorry so except for goodwill which is not going to give rise to defer tax at the stage of business combination you will create a defer tax for every other item in net assets unless the question specifically tells you that it does not give rise to defer tax okay another thing that can arise at the stage of business combination is the possibility of a carry forward loss now usually carry forward loss creates a defer tax asset but what if the target company thought that they will not be able to earn sufficient profits and hence they did not create a defer tax asset which is perfect the acquirer post acquisition still is skeptical that they will not be able to generate sufficient profits they will also not create a defer tax asset on the carry forward losses remember on the carry forward losses however if the acquirer believes that they will be in a position to earn sufficient profits then irrespective of what the target had recorded in its individual books for the carry forward losses they can create a defer tax asset provided they believe that they will be able to generate sufficient profits or benefits against which the deduction for the carry forward losses can be claimed okay a few important adjustments over here would be as we said that while calculating defer tax in case of net assets you will take the carrying value as the value as per indes that is a fair value the tax base would be the old carrying values if a separate tax base data is not given an important problem can be that what will be the tax rate to be used so there can be different tax rate let's say 30% for the parent and 40% let us say for the subsidiary remember we will take the 40% tax rate for calculating the deferred tax on the net assets because it is going to be assessed to tax in the subsidiary's individual books goodwill will not create any deferred tax because of the exception and the differences are always assumed to be temporary and this is a question tells you otherwise in the case of business combination okay now another exception while creating dtl would be so usually dtl should always be created unless it is dtl on goodwill which you will not create or another exception is that if there is an investment let us say in a subsidiary what happens is when subsidiary distributes the dividend it is income for the parent and hence parent will have to pay pay tax however whether the subsidiary will distribute the dividend or not is under the parent's control and if the parent believes that it does not intend the subsidiary to give any dividend then it, there will be no liability because till the time the dividend is distributed there will be no tax on the dividend so over here exceptions to dtl will be two conditions if dividend distribution is within the entity's control which is the case in which is the case for subsidiaries not the case for associates or joint ventures and no dividend is expected to be distributed in the foreseeable future if both of these conditions are met then like it is meant for a subsidiary then dtl need not be created however for associates or joint ventures you cannot necessarily control the timing of dividend payment and hence you will have to create dividend because if the associate or joint venture pays the dividend then you will have to pay tax and hence that is beyond your control and as a result you will create a dtl for associates and joint ventures or other investments but not for subsidiary in case the two conditions are met okay now there is another special case which is pertaining to defer tax and share based payment so share based payment usually has an svp reserve that gets created in the balance sheet now svp reserve is a reserve item and hence the general rules that you follow for assets and liabilities is not followed over here in fact indes 12 gives you a separate specific guidance and hence the accounting will be done based on that specific guidance only so what are the three steps step number 1 so you will start with the carrying value carrying value is a value as per indes now ideally you will take the value as per indes 102 however the standard says that your carrying value should be taken as nil the logic over here is the indes value is based on the fair value but income tax does not give you deduction based on the fair value of the option it gives you deduction based on the intrinsic value at the point of exercise so to say that okay uh, there's a 30 rupees fair value out of which 10 rupees is expense in the first year second year third year in the books it does not really matter because that is not going to be the base for the purpose of tax calculations at all and hence they say let the carrying value be taken to be nil second is the tax base now the tax base 
is calculated now ideally tax base is the amount appearing in the tax balance sheet now till the time of exercise nothing really appears in the tax balance sheet even then the standard over here says that the tax base should be taken based on the intrinsic value into let us say prorata let's say 1 by 3 2 by 3 3 by 3 as a case may be because the deduction is actually going to be claimed based on the intrinsic value so let us say it's a three year vesting then at the end of the first year you will actually try to find the intrinsic value you will assume that that intrinsic value if it were to remain the same that is the deduction that will be given so intrinsic value into pro rate again the deduction will be provided three years have gone by out of which let's say one year has gone by so you will pro rate it and that will give you the tax base so the difference between the carrying value which is nil and the tax base which is going to be the pro rated intrinsic value that difference will be the source of defer tax but will this be a defer tax asset or liability well the standard says this will always be a defer tax asset the logic over here is because due to this difference income tax is going to give you deduction in the future years when the exercise will happen and hence it will always be a dta so the three rules that you need to remember for any question which involves a share based payment and defer tax step number one carrying value is nil not the value that is actually appearing in the books of accounts second tax base is a pro rated intrinsic value and third the deferred tax will always be a deferred tax asset so these are the three things a few other special cases or key points is recently institute has been asking a lot of questions which involve you having to reconcile the profit as appearing in your books uh, the tax as per your that should be there based on the accounting profit with the income tax expense so usually the difference arises due to other than temporary items remember for temporary items you have created the defer tax and hence the effect kind of gets negated at most places so the reconciliation like for example you might have earned a profit of 100 rupees which is there in your books there was a 10 rupees uh, deduction for uh, in your books already claimed for the purpose of let us say uh, uh, donations to unregistered institutions and hence this 100 is after the 10 income tax disallows that and hence as per income tax the profit is 110 so 110 into 30 percent that is equal to 33 will be your current tax but if you look at the accounting profit the tax would be 100 into 30 percent that is equal to 30 there is no deferred tax because it is other than temporary difference so that three rupees that you are paying extra is going to be shown as a reconciliation because your effective tax rate is higher it is higher than what is there in your accounting because there are certain expenses which are disallowed and hence there is a reconciliation and these reconciliation will be usually due to other than temporary items second deferred tax in case of rou asset and lease liability so remember income tax does not consider rou asset income tax does not consider lease liability and hence the tax base for RU asset and lease liability will be nil. However, when you look at index 116, there would be an RU asset which has a debit balance or lease liability at the end of the year, which has a credit balance. You will find the net debit or net credit, and the difference between the two will give rise to the deferred tax asset or the deferred tax liability, as the case may be. So, over here, income tax will also give you deduction, but that is in the form of rent. Books will give you deduction in the form of depreciation, interest, etc. That difference is temporary. So, you will in in case of ROU asset and lease liability, you will create step one carrying value that is the index value of ROU asset and the index value of lease liability. You can net them off and find the net debit or net credit. Step two tax base, which will always be zero. The difference into the tax rate will give rise to a different tax asset or liability as the case may be. Third comes MAT, minimum alternative tax. Remember what is MAT? Generally for companies which claim a lot of exemptions, minimum alternative tax is to be paid but remember mat is not really a tax in the sense that you can claim a mat credit so for example over a period of 15 years mat credit can be claimed so if i'm paying let's say 18 20 percent of the book profits as mat i can claim that as a credit in the future years when i'm subjected to pay income tax so mat is truly like a prepayment of tax rather than an actual tax and hence mat that you have paid for which credit you are expected to take will be treated as a deferred tax asset rather than treating it separately as an expense or anything so mat will be created directly as a dta and another important point over here will be the deferred tax on revaluation so usually when you look at revaluation revaluation goes through the revaluation reserve which is a part of other comprehensive income whereas depreciation goes to the pnl so for example if there is an asset which is currently having uh, at the start of the year an ind as value of 100 income tax basis for example 40 rupees in which case there would be a difference of 60 let's say tax rate is 30 percent and hence there is a dtl appearing of 50, 18 rupees at the start of the year now during the year let us say there is depreciation and there is 
revaluation so depreciation is rooted to the profit and loss account so let us say in the books there's a 10 rupee depreciation and hence we would say that by the end of the year as per indas the balance should be 90 let's say as per income tax the depreciation is 4 rupees then by the end of the year the balance is around 36 and hence if you go to see the difference between 90 and 36 which is coming to let us say 54 rupees so the difference reverses by 6 rupees this is 6 rupees because of depreciation which is in the books at 10 and income tax at 4 and this depreciation goes to the PNL. So 54 into 30 percent comes to let's say 16.2. So your DTL will be reduced. DTL account debit. You will have to reduce the DTL by 1.8. And this is due to depreciation. And depreciation goes to the PNL. And hence the second effect of 1.8 also goes to the PNL. Now by the end of the year, the asset is at 90. However, if you are following the revaluation model, this asset has to be revalued. Let us say the fair value at the end of the year is 140. So, if you show this as 140, there is another 50 rupees going into the revaluation. Income tax does not recognize that and hence the tax base continues to be at 36. And hence the difference over here is let us say 104. So, now if you go to see on 104 at the rate of 30% comes to let us say 31.2 now we have already recorded at 16.2 and if i take the difference this is around 15 rupees now this 15 rupees is due to revaluation that is 50 rupees of revaluation into 30 percent now if the revaluation is going to go to the oci then the tax impact on that should also go to the oci so you will have let us say revaluation reserve as a part of oci account debit to let us say a deferred tax liability to the extent of 15 rupees so long story short in cases of pp where there is revaluation and depreciation both you will first try to find the deferred tax at the start of the year then during the year you will consider depreciation and find that how much is the deferred tax liability changing that will be rooted to the pnl once that is done you will consider the current year revaluation and then figure out that how much is the changes which are arising due to the revaluation and then take that adjustment through the other comprehensive income so i hope that i've been able to summarize or put most of the crucial items which are there in this chapter at a concept level uh, into this theory section after that we will try to discuss the important questions over here and hopefully you should be in a position to tackle index 12 pretty well so we'll jump onto the questions and today we will be actually doing more questions than what is there in our uh, so quite a few questions we will do most of this is more than the super 99 super 99 has around three four questions but here we'll try to do even more because in test 12 i want you to kind of have a much better and a deeper understanding so these questions are you can just refer it or they are actually there in our study material or separately from the institute material as well if possible i just share the pdf on telegram as well because we are doing more questions uh, so that you get a much more clearer understanding let us discuss them quickly so if i look at this question it's a very simple and a basic concept builder one a company has purchased an asset for one lakh estimated life is around five years and depreciation rate is 20 percent so it is 20,000 each year depreciation for tax purpose is 25 percent that is 25,000 each year the operating profit is one lakh for all the five years tax rate is 30 percent calculate the book value as per financial and tax purposes and then detail so if i look at the financial purposes it is 1 lakh minus 20,000 that is 80,000 in the first year then 20 20,000 subtracted in each of years so that's 80, 60, 40, 20 and then 0 as you can see over here for tax purposes since 25,000 is the depreciation it is 75 then 50 then 25 0 and then for the last year again 0 so that will be your tax base now the difference over here will be 5,000 in the first year that is 80 minus 75 that is 5 increasing to 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 and ultimately in the fifth year it is reversing that is coming to zero. Now in each of these years since the carrying value that is the value as per index is greater than the tax base the answer will be opposite that is a deferred tax liability. The tax rate given over here is I think uh, I think if it's not given the tax rate is given as 30 percent and hence 1500 will be your deferred tax liability for the first year building up to 33,000, 4,500 and so on. So it's a fairly basic question more for concept builder now question number two is an important question and there are many questions that the institute clubs like this and asks you where it will ask you multiple questions and it will expect you to calculate a deferred tax asset or a liability as a case maybe so over here x is preparing the cfs each year during the year ended 30 first march 18 the following effect events affected the tax position so there are four events which are like four different questions altogether and at the end what is asked explain how each of these events would affect the deferred tax asset or liabilities in the consolidated balance sheet 
as per indus assume that the rate of tax is 20% so four events if you look at the first one why is a wholly owned subsidiary of x made losses adjusted for tax purposes of 30 lakhs so if it is a loss loss usually gives rise to deferred tax asset provided you have sufficient benefits against which you can utilize the loss why is anybody to utilize this loss against previous tax liabilities x income tax does not allow why to transfer the tax loss to other group companies in india also they don't however it allows why to carry forward the loss and utilize it against a future profit of why only okay you cannot transfer it to other group companies the directors of x do not expect why to make taxable profits in the foreseeable future so there would be no dta to be created if why expected if it was expected that y can earn profits then you can definitely create dt at the rate of 30 lakhs into let us say 20% but that is not the case over here okay next you look at just before 31st march 2008 okay x committed itself to closing a division after the year end making a number of employees redundant so this is like a closure provision therefore x recognized a provision for closure cost at the rate of 20 lakhs in its statement of financial positions it must have debited the pnl and created a liability for closure cost at 20 lakhs income tax act allows deductions for closure cost only when they are actually uh, taken place or paid in the reverse margin 19 x expects to make taxable profits well in excess of 20 lakhs so it has sufficient benefits against which it can use to get the deduction in the future years and on the reverse margin 18 it also has taxable temporary differences which are greater than 20 lakhs so over here if i go to see what is happening so for example over here there is a provision for closure cost which is a liability if i try to find its carrying value the carrying value over here for example for this cost would be let us say 20 lakhs if i look at this in lakhs the tax base income tax would not have recorded any of this in the current year and hence the tax base for example over here is let us say zero so the difference over here is going to be 20 lakhs and this difference into the tax rate and hence this will come to 20 into 20% that is 4 lakhs this is a case where the carrying value is greater than the tax base so the answer is opposite for a liability this creates a deferred tax asset conceptually it's a deferred tax asset because you are going to get more deduction in the future years as per income tax so this gives you a deferred tax asset and there seem to be sufficient benefits for x and hence a dta should be created to the tune of let us say 4 lakhs okay next during the year ended 31st march 17 x capitalized development cost i think this should be 31st march 18 uh, development cost which satisfied the indus 38 criteria the total amount capitalized was 16 lakhs the development began to generate economic benefits from 1st january 18 so during the year 9 months it was still under the research phase and then benefits research or development phase and then after 1st january 18 up uh, it will generate benefits the directors of x estimated that the project would generate benefits for 5 years and the development expenditure was fully deductible against the taxable profits for the year ended 31st march 18 so if i look at intangible asset in your books the asset was capitalized at 16 lakhs and after that it was depreciated or amortized so 16 divided by 5 that is per annum into 3 by 12 so probably around 18000 and hence around 15.8 would be your uh, balance and from 15.8 nay no, sorry 15.2 will be your balance against income tax the entire development expenditure is expense so if you open the income tax balance sheet there will be no intangible asset the entire 15.2 is a difference this is carrying value greater than tax base for an intangible which is an asset so answer is opposite a deferred tax liability so there will be a dtl of 15.2 into 20% probably this comes to around 3 lakh 4000 here you don't need to see whether there are profits or not you can create a deferred tax liability conceptually income tax has given you a 16 lakh deduction books may only 80000 has been obtained as amortization for the remaining 15.2 lakhs books will give you deduction in the future income tax will not and hence you will have to pay more tax in the future years hence a dtl last one point 4 on first april 17 we borrowed 1 crore the cost to x of arranging the borrowing was 2 lakh so this is transaction cost if you are borrowing financial liability is recorded at initial value that is 1 crore minus 2 lakhs and hence 98 lakhs and this cost qualified for tax deduction on first april 17 so income tax took the 2 lakhs directly to pnl as per 109 2 lakhs will be reduced from 1 crore the loan was for a 3 year period no interest was payable on the loan but amount was repayable on 31st march 2020 at 1 crore 30 lakhs on another 30 lakh 43800 this equates to an eir of 10% as per income tax act a further tax reduction of 30 lakhs will be claimed when the loan is repaid so books will record interest as per effective interest method but income tax will give you full deduction for interest 
in the third year so there can be a possible difference so you can look at an item like a loan and for loan as per index 109 your opening balance year 1 opening balance will be 98 lakhs on which eir at the rate of 10% will be 9.8 lakhs there is zero coupon and hence the closing over here would be around 107.8 lakhs so you can take 107.8 lakhs as your loan liability income tax will say bank account debit to loan 1 crore deduction so tax pnl account debit to bank for processing fees 2 lakhs and no other entry so in your income tax books 100 year ago not 98 why because uh, the 2 lakhs is allowed as a deduction and hence the difference is 7.8 7.8 kaha hai 9.8 is deduction claimed in the books for interest 2 lakhs is a deduction claimed in income tax for processing fees so 9 7.8 is a difference 7.8 into let us say 20% and you get around 1 lakh 56000 of deferred tax asset this is for x and x as sufficient benefits and hence a dta can very well be created it's a liability where carrying value is greater than the tax base so the answer is opposite and hence a dta can be created over here so this is regarding uh, the four points for question number 2 then you go to question number 3 where you are finalizing the statements for 31 march 12 before that the government announced that the tax rate is to be amended from 40 to 45% with effect from 30 june so the government has announced that the legislation to amend the tax rate has not yet been approved however the government has a significant majority and it is usual in the tax jurisdiction to regard an announcement to have a substantive effect of an actual change so we can consider this to be a substantive enactment and hence you will have to calculate it based on the revised tax rate of 45% after performing the income tax calculation as the rate of 40 the entity has the following deferred tax asset and liability so 80000 and 60000 of the deferred tax asset 28000 relates to a temporary difference which is previously recognized in OCI and accumulated as a revaluation surplus so out of this 80 we can say 28000 is adjusted against oci and hence the remaining i would say 52000 must be against the pnl for deferred tax liability there is no such problem the entity reviewed the carrying amount in accordance with indest 12 and determined it was probable that there was sufficient taxable profit to adjust the deferred tax asset so you can adjust the deferred tax asset show the revised amount of dta and dtl and present the necessary general entries so this is let us say all of this let's say even 60000 all of this is at the rate of 40% if i were to cross multiply and find this at 45% so we will say if 28000 was at 40% then at 45% it is how much so this is probably 31500 similarly 52 divided by 40 into 45 and this will come to around 58500 and lastly 60000 divided by 40 into 45 and this is 67500 so basically you will increase the dtl you will increase the dtl and dta this will be increased let us say by 3500 this will be increased by let us say 6500 and this will be increased by 7500 the second effect for this dta which is through the oci will go against the oci everything else will be routed through the profit and loss so if you go to see dt account debit to defer tax expense which is in oci through the revaluation will be 3500 and everything else will be routed through the profit and loss account so this is regarding the changes due to defer tax just a quick revision question number 4 is on rou asset and lease liability so on first april 11 so 116 application on first april 11 we leased a machine for a 5 year period the present value of the liability is 120 crores discounted is 8% which is a lease liability and a corresponding rou asset is also recorded perfect 120 crore lease liability 120 crore rou asset so net debit minus credit is zero rou asset is depreciated under straight line method over 5 years so 120 divided by 5 so that is 24 and hence rou asset must be coming at 94 by the end of the year the annual lease rentals are 30 payable at 31st march 12 and tax law permits a tax reduction on the basis of rent assuming a 30% tax rate you are required to calculate deferred tax consequences for the above transaction so if you go to see in this case there will be an rou asset at the end of the year and lease liability at the end of the year so if i look at the carrying value as per indes this is 120 minus 24 so this is equal to 96 on the debit and then on amortized cost basis this is 120 that rate i think is 8% so 120 into 8% comes to 9.6 Minus thirty, which is paid, so this is closing. Comes to probably ninety nine point six, and your liability is ninety nine point six, and hence there is a net credit of three point six, 
नेट क्रेडिट टैक्स बेस नथिंग अपियर्स एंड हेंस दिस इज जीरो एंड हेंस इज अ डिफरेंस ऑफ थ्री पॉइंट सिक्स दैट इज अ नेट लाइबिलिटी बिकॉज अली इज लाइबिलिटी इज ग्रेटर थ्री पॉइंट सिक्स इंटू वट एवर इज द टैक्स रेट आई थिंक द टैक्स रेट ओवर हियर इज थर्टी परसेंट इंटू थर्टी परसेंट दैट इज अराउंड वन पॉइंट जीरो एट सो थर्टी परसेंट दैट इज वन पॉइंट जीरो एट इट इज अ लाइबिलिटी वर कैरिंग वैल्यू इज ग्रेटर टैक्स बेस आंसर इज ऑपोजिट एंड हेंस दिस विल गिव राइज टू अ डी टी ए द लॉजिक ओवर हियर इज यू हैव प्रोबेबली क्लेम्ड अ लेसर डिडक्शन इन इनकम टैक्स एज कंपेयर टू इन बुक्स बट यू विल गेट अ हाई डिडक्शन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ लीज रेंट सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन बुक्स यू हैव क्लेम्ड अ ट्वेंटी फोर रुपीज डिडक्शन एंड यू हैव ऑल्सो क्लेम्ड अ नाइन पॉइंट सिक्स इंटरेस्ट डिडक्शन सो दैट इज थर्टी थ्री पॉइंट सिक्स इनकम टैक्स गेव यू ओनली थर्टी रुपीज एस रेंटल डिडक्शन बट दैट थ्री पॉइंट सिक्स एक्स्ट्रा दैट यू गॉट इन बुक्स यू विल गेट इन इनकम टैक्स एट अ लेटर डेट एंड हेंस अ डिफर टैक्स एस एट सो वी आर जस्ट क्विकली रिफरिंग दैट सो दैट वी कैन काइंड ऑफ एक्सप्लेन यू इन दीज स्पेशल केसेस यू कैन ऑलवेज पॉज एंड रिफर एंड रिव्यू दिस क्वेश्चन इन अ मोर डिटेल एज वेल नेक्स्ट यू गो टू क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव नो केस प्रिपेयरिंग सी एफ एस ऑन थर्टी फर्स्ट मार्च के एंटर इन टू द फॉलोइंग ट्रांजेक्शन्स So K purchased equity investment of two lakhs. So this is investment in equity shares for two lakhs. Investment was designated at FVT OCI on thirty first March twelve. The F fair value was two lakh forty. So maybe you must have recorded in the index at two lakh forty with the corresponding credit going to OCI. In the tax jurisdiction in which K operates, unrealized gains and losses on revaluation are not taxable unless it is sold. So it will be taxed when it is sold. K has no intention of selling them in the foreseeable future. So, if I go to this question, this is investment in equity shares. As per index, this is shown as two point four. Income tax will not revalue it, but it will show, still show it at two lakhs. And hence, there is a difference. For example, of forty thousand, this is a difference where the carrying value is greater than the tax base. And if the carrying value is greater than the tax base, then the answer is opposite so it will give rise to a deferred tax so when you look at a deferred tax this is probably a deferred tax liability but at what rate so at the end of the question you might be given the tax rate assume the tax rate is 25% so this is going to be at 25% 40000 into 25% comes to 10000 and this is a dtl however where will this be rooted so you will have let's say oci fair value reserve account debit for 10000 To a DTL coming at ten thousand, this will have no current tax impact. It will only have a deferred tax impact. Okay. Next, you have sub point B on first August eleven. K sold products to A, a wholly owned subsidiary. So this is downstream in the same tax jurisdiction as K for eighty thousand. The goods had a cost to K for sixty four thousand. So that means there is a profit of sixteen thousand. A had sold forty percent of these goods, selling the remaining during the next year. So there is some unrealized profit as well. So we look at the balance sheet item, and the balance sheet item over here in the CFS is inventory. So ideally, if I look at the group as a whole in my CFS, in the group as a whole, as my CFS, K must have purchased this inventory at eighty thousand, and out of this, it has sold forty percent of that. So sixty percent is still remaining. So its inventory must have been shown at forty eight thousand in the CFS. However, as per India, is hundred and 11 underlies profit has to be eliminated now the profit is 16000 16 that is 80 minus 64 16000 out of the 16000 40% of the profit is realized 60% of the profit is unrealized and hence you will have into uh, 60 so you will have 16000 that is the total profit into 60% which is attributable to profit which is let us say unrealized and hence 9600 you will eliminate and hence Your inventory appears at probably thirty-eight thousand four hundred. Remember, income tax does not recognize consolidation, and hence, in the subsidiary's individual books, the inventory continues to appear at forty-eight thousand, and hence nine thousand six hundred is the difference. And this is where carrying value is less than the tax base. Your carrying value is thirty-eight thousand four hundred. Tax base is forty-eight thousand, and hence for nine thousand six hundred, carrying value is less than the tax base. An asset will give rise to a deferred tax asset. So this will be a DTA. And this will be nine thousand six hundred into twenty five percent comes to probably two thousand four hundred. So you will create a DTA at two thousand four hundred rupees. At the same time, there will be current tax for the group as a whole. If there is a sixteen thousand profit in the books of the parent, sixteen thousand into twenty five percent, you will have to pay let us say four thousand as current tax. So there will be a four thousand current tax over here. If you see the second sub point, there is. 
2400 which is defer tax asset and there is a current tax over here of 4000 okay and sub point c on 31st october 11 k received 2 lakhs from a customer this payment was in respect of services to be provided from november to july k recognized revenue of 1 lakh 20 in respect of this transaction in the year as per 115 probably and will recognize the remainder in the next year because services must have been performed pro rata under the tax jurisdiction we uh, uh, record 2 lakhs on 31st October was included entirely in the taxable profit. So over here in your books of accounts you must have passed the entry bank account debit to unearned revenue of 2 lakhs. Out of that 1 lakh 20 is recognized. So your unearned revenue or deferred revenue balance which is a liability is still appearing at 80,000. In income tax it is directly bank account debit to revenue. Like in GST you say receipt or invoice whichever is earlier similar to that. So probably over here if you look at deferred revenue. Sorry I am just doing this. Uh, in a slightly shabby format but just to ensure that you understand the essence so over here this is 80,000 at the end of the year tax basis let us say zero bank account debit to revenue and as a result this is 80,000 now this is the case where your carrying value is greater than the tax base so a liability will create an asset so since your carrying value is greater than the tax base your answer is opposite deferred revenue or unearned revenue is a liability Opposite effect, it will be an asset. So, this is what 80,000 into 25%, and this comes to 20,000 DTA. Conceptually, why do, should this be a DTA? Well, because in income tax, you have paid more tax. You have recorded the entire 2 lakhs as income. In the next year, when another 80,000 in the books will be recorded as income, there will be no further income to be recorded in income tax, and hence you have paid more tax. Now, you will pay lesser tax in the future. So, that's a DTA. If you sit to calculate current tax, assuming there are no expenses, 2 lakhs into 25%, entirely 50,000 will be taken as the current tax expense. So, this question asks you to show the tax consequences, both current and deferred, and hence we also discussed regarding the current tax of 50,000 and then a deferred tax, let us say, of 20,000. So, this is also a question which is similar if I go to see to question number, uh, uh, and earlier I think question number 2 that we discussed. Next, you go to question number six. Now, this is regarding special cases like MAT as well as revaluation. So, first case is MAT and we discussed ke MAT, ka kya hota? MAT creates a deferred tax asset. End of story. Why? Because if you are expecting to get MAT credit, that means you are paying something now for which you are going to get a credit in the future years. And hence, MAT directly, not MAT into the tax rate. Whatever is the MAT amount, directly is the DTA. QA is in the process of computation of deferred taxes as per index and wants your guidance. QA does not have taxable income as per the tax laws but pays MAT based on book profits. The tax paid under MAT can be carried forward for the next 10 years. To date is 15 years, I think. But nevertheless, it is 10 years here. As per the company's projections submitted to bankers, it is in a position to get credit by the end of the 8th year. The company is recognizing the MAT credit as a current asset under IGAP. The amount of MAT credit as on 31st March 16 is 8.5 crores and then 9.75 crores. So basically, you will show this as a deferred tax asset initially of 8.5 crores and then going all the way up to 9.75 crores. So during the year, there will be a 1.25 crore adjustment. So there will be a DT account debit, for example, by 1.25 crores net. And the second effect will probably be taken to the profit and loss account. Next, the company measures its head office property using the revaluation model. The property is revalued every year on 31st March and on 31st March 16, that is start of the year, the carrying value of the property after revaluation was 40 and its tax base was 22. So during the year ended 31st March 17, that's a year later. Company charged depreciation in statement of PL at 2 crores and tax deduction for depreciation is at 1.25 crores. So you are having different opening values, different depreciation. On 31st March 17, the property was revalued to 45 crores and as per the tax laws, revaluation of PP does not affect taxable profits at the time of revaluation. Company has no other temporary differences. You are required to calculate the deferred tax liability and the corresponding charge to PNL or OCI considering the tax rate at 20%. So over here what you need to do is as we discussed at the last part of the theory we need to first find the opening balance then see the difference which is arising due to depreciation exclusively and take it to the PNL then the difference due to revaluation and take it through the OCI. So over here if I were to look at the PPE for example 
at 31st March 2016. Your carrying value is 40. Your tax base is 22. The difference is 18. Where the carrying value is greater than the tax base for a PP, and hence the answer is opposite. A deferred tax liability 18 into 20 percent, I think, is 3.6. This is 3.6 of DTL opening. Now during the current year, by 31st March 17, if I consider the effect of depreciation only, then 40 minus 2 that is equal to 38 and 22 minus 1.25 that is 20.75 so there is a difference for example of 38 minus 20.75 comes to around 17.25 and for this 17.25 again the carrying value is greater than the tax base and hence there is a deferred tax liability of 3.45 but at the start of the year the DTL was 3.6 so the DTL reduces so you will debit the DTL by one uh, sorry by 0.15 but why is it reducing? Well, due to depreciation, the difference is reducing due to depreciation where depreciation as per books is 2, income tax is 1.25 and hence the difference is around 0.75 and hence DTL account debit, let us say 2, you will have deferred tax expenses which can be taken against, uh, uh, which can be taken, let us say, against your profit and loss because depreciation goes against the profit and loss. So, the effect over here is through the profit and loss. Now, on 31st March 17, you will now bring in revaluation. Revaluation is not done as per income tax, but as per books, this value is 45. So there is a 7 rupees revaluation. Compare this with still 20.75. And hence the difference over here is probably 45 minus 20.75 comes to around 24.25. This 24.25 into 20% comes to 4.85. Again, this is carrying values greater than the tax base. So it's a DTL. So why is it increasing 4.85 minus 3.45 it is increasing by 1.4 1.4 is nothing but 7 of revaluation into 20 percent and hence your dtl you will credit your dtl but then what will you debit well revaluation reserve or deferred tax expense which is rooted through the other comprehensive income of 1.4 so a quick overview of these items on how you should take this uh, for special cases like mat as well as revaluation Next, we have this question number 7, which is pertaining to business combination, where H acquired 100% of the capital for 15 lakhs. So, this is like the PC. The book value and fair values of S at the date of acquisition are given below together with the tax base in S's jurisdiction. So, if tax base is given, we will take that. Any goodwill arising from acquisition is not deductible for tax purposes. So, there will be no deferred tax. On goodwill, in any case, it is not required. The tax rates in entity H and SS jurisdiction are 30 and 40. So, for us, for deferred tax on business combination, you will take the subsidiaries, net assets, and hence the subsidiaries tax rate of 40%. You will look at the tax base and fair values. Book values in this case are not required. So, you will take the tax base. You will take the fair values. So, if I were to take the total fair values, probably this total fair values comes to around 1070 net and the total tax base let us say comes to around 920 so the difference over here is around 150 where carrying value is greater the index value is greater than the tax base and hence so this is a fair values this is as per index 103 and income tax would keep it as a tax base so this is the case where carrying value is greater than the tax base so income tax will in the future give you net deduction of only net 920 simplistically books will give you 1070 so you'll get lesser deduction in income tax and hence you'll have to pay more tax so it's a dtl conceptually rule wise carrying value is greater than the tax base for an asset opposite answer deferred tax liability so this is 150 into 40 percent 150 into 40 percent and then 60 will be my deferred tax liability in any case i don't show anything separately for goodwill okay Further, if I want to calculate the goodwill, it is PC, PC is I think 1500 plus NCI, which is not there, minus net assets, net assets taken over will be 1070, asset minus 60, so this is 1010, and hence I think 490 would be your goodwill to be recorded. Okay, next you go to question number 8. This is again on business combination, where on 1st April, A acquired 12 crore shares, which is representing 80% stake by means of cash payment of 25 crore. So, this is like your PC. It's group policy to value NCI in subsidiaries at fair value and the market value of equity shares on 1st April 11 can be used for this purpose. The market value of B was 2 rupees. So, if 
12 crores is for an 80% stake then 20% stake which is attributable to NCI will have 3 crore shares so 3 crore shares of NCI into rupees 2 will come to 6 crores which will be your NCI balance on 1st April 11 the individual finance statement showed net assets of 23 crores okay but directors carried out a fair value exercise to measure the identifiable assets and liabilities and the following matters emerged property having a carrying value of 15 crores had an estimated market value of 18 crores so there is a plus 3 crore adjustment for the property plant having carrying value of 1 crore had an estimated sorry this is not 1 this is 11 crores sorry my bad had an estimated market value of 13 crores so this is plus 2 over here and inventory shown at 2.5 has a fair value of 3 so this is another 0.5 so you might say that your net assets as per books is 23 however if I were to take them over at fair value it is 23 plus 3 plus 2 plus 0.5 and hence probably it is around 27 or 28.5 the fair value adjustments have not been reflected in the individual statements in the CFS the fair value adjustments will be regarded as temporary differences for deferred tax and the rate of deferred tax is 20% calculate the deferred tax impact on the above and the goodwill arising on B so if I look at the deferred tax basically net assets as per end AS net assets carrying value as per end AS based on the fair value would be 23 plus 3 plus 2 plus 0.5 so this is around 28.5 tax base will probably be the same that is 23 and hence a difference of 5.5 this is carrying value greater than the tax base answer is opposite and hence it's a DTL 5.5 into let us say 20 percent and hence this is 1.1 of DTL so basically your net assets taken over your PC is going to be 25 NCI is going to be sorry there was some audio issue so what I'm trying to say is this difference is going to be temporary because the deduction of 120 ultimately is going to be obtained whether it is books or income tax and hence this is the case where carrying value is greater than tax base so your answer is opposite and asset will give rise to a deferred tax liability so this is DTL 4 into 25 percent will come to 1 so this is due to depreciation so PNL account debit let us say to DTL this is 1 rupees so if I go to see your income tax will be 26 plus 1 of deferred tax liability and hence this is going to be 27 this is going to be your income tax now tax re re reconciliation in absolute numbers as well as tax rate reconciliation 
so if i go to see when we look at uh, the reconciliation over here 27 is appearing as an income tax expense but if i look at my accounting profit my accounting profit is 100 rupees if i do 125 this comes to 25 rupees but my effective tax is coming to be 27 now why is there a difference it is because of the permanent difference that is 8 rupees which is disallowed into 25 percent whereby i'm paying two more and hence 27 rupees is my reconciliation so when i try to reconcile i will say tax on accounting profits is 25 over and above that i have to pay two rupees because there is certain expense which got disallowed and hence i have to pay 27 and hence my effective rate is 27 percent where the actual corporate rate is around 25 percent okay next this is question number 10 this is pertaining to share based payments on 1st April 11, P granted 1 crore share options worth 4 crores, subjected to a 2-year vesting period. Okay, The income tax law permits tax reduction at the date of in exercise based on the intrinsic value. The intrinsic value of the options on 31st March 12 was 1.6 and on 31st March 13 was 4.6. Okay, The increase in the fair value on 31st March 13 was not foreseeable and the options were exercised at 31st March. So, there is no more any SBP reserve outstanding even on 31st March 13, whatever deduction had to be claimed will be claimed. So, if they were exercised on 1st April 13, then yes, there would be some balance on 31st March 13. Here, there would be nothing on 31st March 13. Give the accounting for the above, for the purpose of defer tax for 31st March 12 and 13. Assume there are sufficient taxable profits which can be used for deferred tax and tax rate is applicable at the rate of 30 percent so over here one needs to remember that this is based on a specific guidance so for the year 11 12 as well as for the year 12 13 so when i look at the year 11 12 this is on 31st march 12 this is on 31st march 13 the carrying value is the value as per index which at both places has to be taken as zero based on the specific guidance now tax base this will be basically 1.6 crores but this 1.6 crores intrinsic value is provided two year vesting is over which is not yet done so this is 0.8 at the second year technically this should be 4.6 provided you are yet to get a deduction however since the options have been exercised on 31st March 13 the deduction is obtained and as a result this will become zero because income tax has given you deduction in the year 12 13 only you don't have to go to the year 13 14 had the options been exercised in the on 1st April 13 then this would be appearing at 4.6 and now you try to find the difference the difference over here is pointed let us say the difference over here is zero and this will always give rise to a DTA you don't have to compare higher lower this will always be a DTA so this is 0.8 into for example 30 percent which is equal to 0.24 and this will be a DTA account debit to PNL in the first year and reversal of the DTA once the deduction is obtained in the second year okay so as you can see 0.24 and then zero so DTA account debit to the PNL and then PNL account debit to the DTA in the second year. Okay, now the next questions, the next set of questions from 11 all the way up to the end, I think are done by me in a lot of length uh, in the in a video which you can refer separately where we have discussed the new questions added in index 12 so these are around four or five questions uh, a part of the new questions added so we can quickly refer this but if you want a detailed review it's a good two two and a half hour video where we have uh, kind of discussed at length all the new questions that have been added by index 12 if possible i'll share the link also separately for that video over here but uh, uh, you can refer that for a detailed discussion and if you are comfortable with a, just a broad overall review we can just discuss that over here as well okay so following is a summarized statement of pnl for new age for index so you have the entire income statement and then you have been told that consider income tax rate applicable to new age is 30 percent so probably if you look at profit before tax of seven uh, 50 ideally 750 into 30 percent should come to 225 but here it is coming to be something else consider expenses include uh, other expenses include the following which are not deducted for income tax purpose so if they're not deductible then this will be affecting your profit so if i go to see your accounting profit for example is 750 based on that at 30 percent 225 should be your ideal tax but it is not 225 why because there are certain expenses like penalties donations impairment which are not deductible for income tax but you uh, 
in your profits as per books you must have claimed deduction and as a result your actual tax would be higher so this is what 1.5 plus 55 plus 7 into let us say 30 percent so this is around 19.05 your actual tax will be higher by 19.05 and hence you have added let's say the 19.05 over here other expenses also include expenditure on scientific research amounting to 10 lakhs in respect of which a 150 percent deduction is available under income tax books must have given you deduction of 10 only income tax would give you a deduction of 10 into 150 percent that is one uh, uh, 15 and hence five extra deductions so for that five extra deduction into 30 percent 1.5 will be lower tax so this is 1.5 less other income includes dividends of 5 lakhs which are exempt from tax and long term capital gains of 12 lakhs which are taxable at the rate of 10%. So when I took 750 to 30% I multiplied everything by 30% which includes 5 lakhs which is not taxable at all and 12 lakhs which is taxable at the rate of 10%. So over here 5 into 30% that is equal to 1.5 you will reduce your tax and 12 into 30 minus 10 that is 20 percent that is i think 2.4 you will also reduce your tax by that so over here you will have dividend income 1.5 so you will say that well you know what because of this 1.5 my actual tax burden is lower similarly because of this 2.4 my actual tax burden is lower similar lines pay profit before tax includes agricultural income of 65 lakhs which is exempt from tax same treatment as dividend and profit of 75 lakhs in usa on which new age paid a tax of 20 percent and hence 75 into 30 percent minus 20 percent that is 7.5 so if you go to see 19.5 as well as 7.5 this you are subtracting because it will reduce your tax burden and thereby you will come to 211.65 so the question asks you that during the review cfo uh, multiplies a profit by the income tax rate and arrives at 225 however actual income tax is 211 you are required to help the cfo so we have just outlined the reasons why there's a difference between 211 as well as 250 largely this is like an income tax question it has come in the main exam as well where you're trying to kind of reconcile the differences between the two points okay so that is around question number 11 next you go to question number 12 it's a slightly uh, weird question pertaining to certain differences which uh, are over here non there's a non tax deductible office building so rtp of november 23 on 1st april 11 an entity paying tax at the rate of 30 percent acquired remember a non tax deductible office building for 1 lakh so for this 1 lakh you are not going to get any tax deduction in circumstances in which India's 12 prohibits recognition of deferred tax liability associated with the temporary difference of 1 lakh so it is for this 1 lakh there will be no deferred tax impact but if that asset is sold at a higher value there can be there can be some gains on which there could be tax so to say that merely because that one lakh is not tax deductible there will be no other tax consequences is wrong the building is depreciated over 10 years at the rate of 10,000 to a residual value of zero the entity's financial year is 31st march on 1st april 12 the carrying amount of the building is 90 which is correct one lakh minus 10,000 and is revalued upwards by 45,000 to its current market value of one lakh 35 okay so this 90 and uh, 1 lakh 35 ke beech mein ka jo difference hai, which is probably 45,000 that is due to revaluation and it is nowhere told that if I were to sell this on this 45,000 there will be no tax in all likelihood there would be tax and as a result there can be a deferred tax impact for that there is no changes to the estimated residual value of zero and the useful life after revaluation define the carrying amount the depreciation for the year ended 31st March 13 and defer tax thereafter Till the useful life of the building uh, further analysis and treatment of the impact of defer tax till the useful life of the building so over here we will say that one lakh is then uh, one lakh will not create any defer tax but that one lakh is depreciated becomes ninety thousand so on ninety thousand there would be no defer tax impact but now it is at one lakh thirty five and hence on forty five thousand there would be a defer tax so that is forty five thousand into for example uh, uh, what is the tax rate over here I think. 30% is the tax rate okay so 45,000 into 30% there will be a 13,500 deferred tax liability through the OCI now after one year this in income tax there is no revaluation so 90,000 will become 80,000 let us say and you are 1 lakh 35 divided by the remaining 9 will be there will be a further 15,000 depreciation so it will become 1 lakh 20 so your difference will be 1 lakh 20 minus uh, 
80 that is 40,000. So your difference of 45,000 will also narrow. And so will the deferred tax. So if you go to see over here, this is uh, uh, this is 9, 1, 35, 90, 45,000 ka difference. This is a deferred tax liability of 13,500. At the end of the year, this will come down to 1, 20 because there's a 15,000 that is 1, 35 divided by 9 of depreciation. And there would be 80,000. Let us say this 90 would also come down and hence on 40,000 at the rate of 30%, this is 12,500 and so on. Okay. Next, we have question number 13. I think 13, 14 and 15. All the three next questions are interrelated. So, we will treat it as one single question. It can also come in an IBS type of a paper because 13 is largely for income tax. 14 and 15 is linked to let us say deferred tax. But let us say if we kind of quickly discuss that. 13, 14, 15 together. Now, H is a manufacturing company wanting to calculate its taxable profit for the year ended 31st March 18. The statement of PNL and OCI are given below. So, you have this entire balance sheet. So, tax rate for the year 17, 18 is 30 percent, but the new tax rate is 32 percent. So, your deferred tax will be based on 32 percent, but your current tax will be based on 30 percent. For the year 18, 19 and beyond, which has already been enacted before the year end, Calculate the taxable profit for the year 17, 18 and the related current tax expense. So, question 13 is purely linked to current tax. So, it is like your paper 4 DT question where you have to calculate current tax. Huge question. If you see everything and then if you go to the next question number 14, it says based on the balance sheet and notes from the previous question 13, calculate the tax base of its assets and liabilities on 31st March 18. And balance sheet has been adjusted for current tax liability. So, you have been given the balance sheet. Remaining information is as per question number 13. So, you have to find the tax base. Okay. And if you see the last question, question number 15, based on the data from the above question 13, calculate temporary differences and deferred tax. Note from question 13, tax rate is 30%, but the new rate of 32% is for the year 18, 19 and beyond has already been enacted. So, based on that, you calculate deferred tax. So, Largely, if you see a similar question has also come in the RTP of May 24, they have not asked you anything regarding current tax, but they have asked you regarding tax base as well as deferred tax calculations so from an exam perspective. Taking 13 as a base, the type of questions that can come in FR is going to be question 14 and 15. But if you look at IBS, where you, they are trying to integrate, let us say, uh, uh, FR and DT, then probably 13, 14, 15 type of a question can very well land up. So, let us look at the adjustments for each of them. Point 1. Depreciation expense for the year 1718 allowable as per income tax rules is 72,10,000. So, that you will claim as deduction as per income tax rules. Depreciation allowed for financial reporting purposes included is 59,50. So, for calculating current tax, you will add back 59,50 and deduct 72,10,000. The cost of PP is 5 crore 60 and H deducted expenses of 1 crore 50 in its tax returns prior to the financial year 1718. So, basically, your PP is 5 crore 60. For income tax, you have already deducted out of the 5 crore 60, you have deducted 1 crore 45 lakh 60,000 prior to the current financial year. And then in the current financial year, another 72 lakh 10,000, 72 lakh 10,000. So maybe 3 crore 42 lakh 30,000 should be the tax base. H for the first time revalued its property to the market value of 4 crore 20 and there is a revaluation surplus. So, if I go to see my carrying value at the end of the year for PP should be 4 crore 20. My tax base should be 3 crore 42 lakh 30,000. So, if I go to see at least over here, my carrying value is 4 crore 20. Tax base is 3 crore 42 lakh 30,000. Carrying value is less than a carrying value is greater than the tax base. So, the difference between the two, just a second, if I were to take the difference is 77 lakh 70,000, where the carrying value is greater than the tax base and hence this gives rise to a deferred tax liability for a PP. So, into 32 percent, remember, this will be calculated as 32 percent tax rates which have been enacted. So, 77 lakh 70 taxable temporary difference, giving rise to 24 lakh 86,400 of deferred tax. For the current tax calculation, as you can see, 5950 will be added back. And 72 lakh 10,000 will be deducted, quite a basic adjustment. Point two in the year 1415. Currently, you are sitting in the year 2017 18. This is 1415. H incurred product development cost of 35 lakhs. These costs were recognized as an asset and amortized over a period of 10 years, so 3 lakh 50 each year. For the tax purposes, H deducted full product development costs when they were incurred. So, for income tax, there will be no further deduction, but in books, you must have claimed a 3,50 amortization and hence that 3,50 will be added back. No further deduction in the current year. If you look at the tax base, tax base will be zero. 
however carrying value would be if this is 14 15 15 16 16 17 17 18 so 3 lakh 50 into 4 there would be 14 lakhs of expense 35 lakhs minus 14 lakhs 21 lakhs must be there in your uh, ledger zero this is carrying value greater than the tax base answer is opposite gives rise to a deferred tax liability taxable temporary difference at the rate of 32 percent second point done okay third point trading investments were acquired in the preceding year at a cost of 80 lakh 50 okay these investments were classified as fetpl and recognized at fair value the fair value adjustments are not allowable by tax authorities so they were acquired at 80 lakh 50 if i were to look at the balance sheet you now have 72 lakh 80 so the difference between 80 lakh 50 and 72 lakh 80 that is around 7 lakh 70 thousand this is a loss which is not allowable by the income tax authorities now so you will have to add back the loss so over here you must have claimed a deduction but you will have to add back the loss so over here 7 lakh 70 thousand of losses added back while calculating your carrying value this will be at 72 lakh 80 tax base would be around 80 lakh 50 the difference is around 7.7 .7 lakhs which is carrying value less than the tax base and hence for an asset it will give rise to a deferred tax asset so over here if you go to see uh, trading investment 70 to 80 80 uh, lakh 50 and hence it will give rise to a dta uh, deferred tax asset because your carrying value is lower okay point four is a little tricky we'll do that in some time regarding bad debts point five h created a provision for inventory obsolescence in accordance with indes 2 requirements okay the new provision created in 1718 was 378 total provision being 630 being a general provision this is not tax deductible so during the year you claimed 378000 as a deduction which you will have to add back that's it for current tax so if i go to see over here 378000 added back now when you look at uh, uh, tax base and carrying value as per ind as your carrying value for inventories will be 1 crore 640000 this is after deducting a total provision of 630 and hence uh, you will say 1 crore 640 plus 630 that is 1 crore 1270000 will be your tax base because income tax does not give you any deduction so this is 1 crore 1270 and ledger balance the difference between the two is 630 and because of this your carrying value is less than the tax base so your answer is in the same direction a deferred tax asset deductible temporary difference deferred tax asset at 32% okay next you go to go to point six government grants are not taxable okay full government grant received in 1718 is included in the balance sheet which means nothing has gone in the profit and loss account and as a result there is no question of any addition no question of deduction there is no deferred tax as well because it has gone into the balance sheet it has not impacted your profit and loss calculation should not be impacting your profit and loss calculation okay in the year 1718 h increased the liability for product warranty cost by one crore one lakh seventy five Product warranty costs are not tax deductible until the company pays the claims. Claims paid in the year 1718 amounted to 2,17,000. So during the current year, you will add back 1,75,000 and deduct 2,17,000. So if you go to see 1,75,000 added back and 2,17,000 will be deducted. Now when you look at your balance sheet, in your balance sheet, you will have your product warranty cost 5,60,000 as per tax balance sheet nothing will be there if there is any claims which are paid they have already been paid so in the tax balance sheet there will be no provision appearing so you will have 5 lakh 60 of liability compared to that zero uh, in the income tax liability carrying value is greater answer is opposite will give rise to deferred tax asset because this will result in more deduction in the future years when you actually pay that 5 lakh 60 so if you look at this uh, you will have probably 5 lakh 60 zero and hence a deductible temporary difference next you have point number eight during the year h introduced healthcare benefits for its employees uh, expenses are allowable for tax purposes only when the benefits are paid in line with indes 19 they're recognized as and when employee provides service so if i look at the balance sheet so in the current year only they've introduced this scheme so you have 24 lakh 50 of medical benefits for employees you may not have paid this and hence income tax is not going to give you any deduction so while calculating the computation you will add back 24 lakh 50 as you can see over here in your balance sheet this is again a temporary difference because deduction will be claimed when you are actually uh, incurring that so 24 lakh 50 and zero and again a deductible temporary difference and that is about it the last two things penalties towards violation of laws included in operating expense 63000 they are not deductible for tax purposes will not have any impact on deferred tax because they are not deductible at all 
but for computation you will add back 63000 okay so as you can see over here 63000 will be added back and tax law allows to deduct expenses for petrol only up to 140 per vehicle h had four vehicles so the deduction as per tax law should be 140 into 4 that is 560 but the total petrol expenses amounted to 721 which means the difference between the two so 721 you will add back and 560 you can deduct so if you go to this uh, they have just given the net effect so 720 and 5 lakh 7 lakh 21 hai shayad. 721 and 5 lakh 60 so if i take the difference between the two you will get exactly 1.61 lakhs there is no deferred tax impact arising out of this so the only thing that remains is this adjustment for bad debts now you need to be a little careful over here bad debt provision is for 45 lakh 50 and relates to two debtors a uh, there is some detail and b so if bad debt provision is 4 lakh 50 uh, if you look at the debtors currently the debtors currently appear at where is this 2 crore 19 lakh 10,000 if you add back 45 lakh 50,000 that will give you the gross debtors okay this will give you the gross debtors and relates to two debtors 28 lakhs uh, for a receivable originates in the year 1516 so you are currently in the year 1718 1516 1617 1718 so around 2 to 3 years back and 100 percent provision was recognized in the preceding year so there was no expense for a recorded in the current year everything was recorded in the preceding year and debtor b 17 lakh 50 receivable originates in the year 1617 that is in the last year and 100 percent provision was recognized in the year 1718 so while you recorded in expenses in the current year entire 17 lakh 50 has gone in your pnl in the current year tax law allows deductions for 20 percent of the provision for debtors overdue for more than one year and 30 percent for debtors overdue for more than two years and 50 percent for the debtors overdue for more than three years so that is as per the tax law so if i go to see in the current year 17 lakh 50 is being allowed as per books so you will add that back and deduct as per income tax act now as per income tax act if you go to see for debtor a for debtor a which is originated in the year 1516 by 31st march 18 it is overdue probably for more than two years but less than three years whenever it originated during the year 1516 it is overdue for more than two years but less than three years so ideally its provision should be 30 percent but in the last year also 20 percent must have been created and hence an additional just a second we'll just review uh, deduction of 20 percent for more than one year another 30 percent okay for it overdue for more than and remaining 50 percent so over here whatever has gone by in the last year has gone by in the current year another 30 percent will be claimed as a deduction because it is overdue for more than two years but less than three years and hence 30 percent of 28 lakhs just a second where is this so uh, bad debt provision for debtor a more than two years so 30 percent deductible in the year 17 18 and hence 8 lakh 40 thousand and for debtor b it becomes overdue for more than one year and hence 20 percent is deductible in the current year so this is 3 lakh 50 and hence 11 lakh 90 is allowed as a deduction as per income tax 11 lakh 90 will be allowed as a deduction as you can see over here and that is about it once you do all of this you will get the taxable profit which will be taxed at the rate of 30 percent not 32 and you get the current tax now for debtors if you want to calculate uh, uh, the carrying value and tax base your carrying value is a value as per the balance sheet which is already there but the tax base is going to be a little tricky so if you look at this for trade receivables 2 crore 19 10 thousand which is the carrying value if you want to look at the tax base over here you will add back uh, the amounts which have been deducted as per books and deduct the amounts that have to be deducted as per income tax so you will say 2 crore 19 lakh 10 thousand this is after 45 lakh 50 thousand which is deducted as per books but as per income tax what is allowed to be deducted now if i go to see as per income tax as per the working over here uh 8 lakh 40 3 lakh 50 that is 11 lakh 90 will be allowed in the current year so this you deduct 11 lakh 90 
बट ओवर एंड अबाउ दैट अर्लियर ऑल्सो ऑन ए ट्वेंटी एट लैक्स का जो ए का बैलेंस था आई थिंक ट्वेंटी एट लैक्स इन टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट मस्ट हैव बीन ऑलरेडी क्लेम्ड एज पर इनकम टैक्स अर्लियर ट्वेंटी एट था ना यस ट्वेंटी एट इन टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट दैट इज आई थिंक फाइव लैख सिक्सटी थाउजेंड वुड हैव बीन क्लेम्ड एंड हेंस इफ आई गो टू सी टू करोर नाइनटीन टेन थाउजेंड प्लस फोर्टी फाइव फिफ्टी विच इज देयर एज पर बुक्स माइनस फाइव लैख सिक्सटी माइनस इलेवन लैख नाइंटी एंड यू हैव टू करोर फोर्टी सेवन लैख टेन थाउजेंड यू माइट नीड अ बिट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस ओवर हियर सो वैल्यू कैरिंग वैल्यू इज लेस देन द टैक्स बेस आंसर इज इन द सेम डायरेक्शन एंड सर डिफर टैक्स एसेट बिकॉज इनकम टैक्स विल गिव यू डिडक्शन फॉर बेड डेट्स इन द फ्यूचर यूर्स एंड हेंस दिस इज अ डी टी ए दैट यू विल क्रिएट सो दिस इज अ फेयरली टैक्सिंग स्टैंडर्ड एंड आई होप दैट वी हैव डन a good enough 15 odd questions it is as if uh most or almost everything is kind of covered over here so we have tried to cover as many questions as possible because this is a standard which is a little tricky we have tried to discuss this because otherwise uh, this is will no longer be kind of a discussion or a revision video it will become a full fledged solving so excuse me if you kind of found that the speed was a little faster or sometimes for some students slower uh we have tried to cover as many questions as possible i hope this video really helps you good luck and i'll see you soon with another videos for revision if you do like this content please show some love and press the like button and also do comment and share with your friends will help us a lot as well and gives us motivation to do even more so see you then good luck goodbye and take care